Memoization is a powerful technique that can drastically improve the performance of recursive or computationally intensive functions. So um, here we're gonna use a common problem, okay? Computing the Fibonacci sequence for a given number. So the traditional approach involves uh, recursive calculations, which can become very slow for larger values, okay? So uh, whenever we want to use uh, recursive functions to actually uh, compute a Fibonacci sequence for, uh, let's say, x as a number, we're going to use such method, okay? So I'm going to say uh, Fibonacci recursive, and here uh, we're going to get n, for example, and then uh, as you can, as as you know, actually, uh, if n is equal zero, or uh, n is equal one, we're gonna return n, and this is it. And then we're gonna return Fibonacci recursive. Oops, sorry about this. And here we're gonna return n minus one. And we're going to plus Fibonacci recursive for n, as you know, minus 2, okay? All right. So now, while this solution works, it suffers from a major drawback, okay? It recalculates the Fibonacci sequence for the same number multiple times, resulting in exponential time complexity. Okay, so for example, let's say that uh, we're gonna uh, actually, yeah, let's say we're gonna calculate F4, uh, okay? Means the Fibonacci sequence for uh, number four, okay? So as you can see here, it equals F3 plus F2, okay? So as you can see here, it's the formula. It's the mathematics behind this Fibonacci, okay? And after that, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna calculate F3 first. So F3 equals F2 plus F1, okay? So as you can see here, we are recalculating F2 and imagine four would be like a hundred, okay? A larger amount. And that would be a pain, actually, to recalculate this. It actually results in exponential time complexity. And we're gonna use something called memoization to solve this problem, okay? Great. So to overcome this, we can leverage memoization. It involves caching the results of previous calculations to avoid redundant computations, okay? So whenever we use F2, we're gonna cache it, so we don't need to recalculate it in the next step, okay? Does that make sense? Great. Now, what can we write here? We're gonna use another function, which is called Fibonacci, let's say, memoized, okay? Now in here, we're gonna get n, as that number, and then we're gonna use something called cache. Okay, we're gonna get this. Great. Now, in here, what can we do? Here, first of all, oops, why did I write this? What can we do here? First of all, if n, again, we're gonna repeat this process if n is equal zero or n equals uh, actually uh, one, what we're going to do here is to return n. But then if cache n exists, then we're gonna return cache n, okay? So if you're passing two to this Fibonacci memoize, then if cache of two exists, then we're gonna return it so we don't have to actually recalculate it. Okay, great. And then we're gonna say cache n is equal to 
Fibonacci uh, minimized, basically, oops, for n minus 1, and then we're going to pass the cache to it, okay? Plus, what can we do here? Fibonacci, again, Fibonacci minimized, here, n minus 2, and then we're going to pass cache to this Fibonacci minimized, okay? So, it means minimization, okay? And then, instead of returning, uh, actually, this whole expression here, we're just going to return, oops, cache n, okay? And here we have it, okay? So, it's great, actually. So, now, what can we do here? is to, uh, let's say that we're going to uh, use Fibonacci minimized for 40, okay? And then, uh, basically, let's just say um, console.log Fibonacci recursive 40. And we're going to repeat the process for Fibonacci minimized, okay? So first of all, let's check if the two functions return an equal um, amount for uh, n40, for Fibonacci uh, of 40, okay? So let's run the uh, source code, actually. And as you can see here, oops, okay. So what is the problem here? It says, oops, I have to now. Oh, uh, uh, okay, there is a problem here, and as you can see here, I did a dummy mistake, a rookie mistake, and uh, I should I should have used uh, or instead of and, okay? So let's clear this out and let's say minimization. Okay, so as you can see here, two functions return equal amount. And so it means that uh, two functions are working greatly, okay? But it's a matter of the time, okay? Time matters here. So actually, we're gonna write a process that we can see the time, okay? See the time that each function took to return the result, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, here, before Fibonacci recursive, we're going to say console.log, uh, oops, sorry, console.time, let's say common approach, okay? And here, after doing this, we're going to say con console dot time end common approach, and finally, we're going to say console log um, basically. Okay, we locked this before, so what we can do here is to just copy and paste this. Okay, or a better way is to say const Oops, common result is a Fibonacci 40, and then we're going to say console.log common result, okay? Uh, or, yeah, we can do something like, um, let's say, what can we write here? Uh, result for common approach okay great now we're gonna repeat the process for Fibonacci memoized okay so here we're gonna say uh, memoized result here we're gonna use Fibonacci memoized here is uh, let's say memoized 
and you're memoized, you're memoized. So now we're gonna run the app so we know how much time each of these functions took to result, uh, actually to return the result for us, okay? So let's run it again, note memoization. And as you can see here, uh, memoized approach took uh, 0 0.089 milliseconds, but here we don't have such a label common approach. Uh, okay, so what is the problem? All right, should use lowercase. So now if you run it again, as you can see here, okay, so common approach took two seconds and minimized approach took, as you can see here, 0 0.089 milliseconds. And that's a huge difference actually. So as you know here, as you understand, by using memoization, we actually improve the performance of our Fibonacci function, okay? It avoids redundant calculations, which results in faster and more efficient code. This is just the one example of how advanced JavaScript functions can simplify complex problems and boost coding productivity, okay? So, I hope you found this video insightful. We've just um, scratched the surface of the advanced JavaScript concepts that can revolutionize your coding experience. So stay tuned for more videos where we'll explore other powerful techniques. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your fellow developers. And as always, happy coding.